Hey everyone, Mike here and welcome back to the Sim Racing Den. So I'm sitting in the rig for this one because I think it's the easiest way to explain um, some of these accessories that I'm going to go over in this video. Now, the I'm going to talk about primarily um, the SimCore Lev1 mounting system for dash displays. And I'm also going to touch on another accessory that SimCore has as well that I think is really useful for mounting different accessories to uh, your aluminum profile rig. So um, some of you might be aware or, or not aware of SimCore already. Um, so this might be a repeat if you're already aware of this accessory. But this, if this is something you've not seen before, stick around because I think you'll find this extremely useful. Now, keep in mind, this is probably overkill for a lot of people. And it's going to be, you know, people that fall into a specific scenario uh, use case where this is going to be extremely useful. Myself being one of those because I, I do often swap wheels and I do have two different DDUs um, that I like to switch between depending on what car I'm driving in the sim. So um, bear with me and I think this is something that you might find useful or something maybe down the road that it, you know will be something you might need. Um, but for people that want you know maximum adjustability when it comes to your dash display and where that sits uh, on your wheelbase, um, this is really amazing guys. This is really a super useful accessory and I think it's totally worth the price for, for what it costs. Uh, it can be expensive because it, uh, SimCore is based in Australia, so depending on where you are in the world, myself being in Canada, the shipping can be a little bit high, but I, I found it to actually be quite reasonable. So, uh, but it's one of those things that now that I have it, I, I really can't live without this for, for, for myself specifically. So let's go over uh, what, what I'm talking about here, and this will start to make more sense as we go through this if you're not familiar with this. So let me just take a look at the wheel here. So. I've got the um, the SimCore uh, Lev1 system in place here on my SimEQ wheelbase, and I'm using right now the um, the Grid DDU5 display. Now, I actually have two of these um, Lev1 systems. So the reason for that basically is, uh, let me just make sure that's in focus. There we go. Is because they recently revamped uh, or made some slight adjustments to, I guess, the design. So the one that's on my wheelbase is the latest generation. This is the previous generation. Um, the reason they made some changes was to incorporate some new dash displays. Specifically, actually, one is the the large Porsche um, 10 inch DU, which which I have. So they've made some changes so that um, there's a plate that will fit with that uh, dash display and be able to use this system. So because of that, I ended up um, getting the second second Lev one so that I could mount my um, Porsche DDU. But so I'm going to use this previous generation just to kind of show you how this works, right? So this part at the back here, this piece is what mounts to your wheelbase. And you can select when you purchase this um, based on the wheelbase that you use, whether it's a Fanatic or a SimiCube, they do support a lot of the um, popular wheelbases, not all of them, but I would say the majority. So let me take this bracket off. So this is the piece that would go on your wheelbase. And what's already very useful about this is you'll see how this bracket so this bracket is what will go on the um the back of your your ddu right so this is what they call a uni uni bracket so it's designed to fit uh, a number of uh ddus which I'll, I'll go through the list on their website in a bit here but just to show you what it looks like it's designed and cut out in a way that it fits um a number of different displays so it does fit the grid ddu5 which i'm using um and some other ones and of course their own sim core dash displays as well so it has cutouts for things like the usb and the holes line up and you can also make adjustments in these slots to kind of get it in place and then what you're essentially doing is just slipping it onto this bracket here and you just unscrew these um i guess knobs here or whatever and then um you can then adjust the height of where that sits but the great part is if you want to just easily remove the DDU when you're not using it, it's just a matter of unscrewing these and pulling it, unplugging it and pulling it off. And then you're you're left intact with a clear view to your screen and this part stays in place. So, you know, with other, um, when you purchase a DDU, usually they come with a mounting bracket for your wheelbase, but then it's pretty much stuck there and you'd have to get out, you know, an Allen key or something and actually unscrew it from the wheelbase, which is, you know, not super convenient if it's... Uh, something you want to do often. Now, if you're never going to remove your DDU, then this probably isn't worth, you know, an accessory that's worth it for you. But I like to personally remove, like, let's say the dash display when I'm driving like a road car or something in a set of Corsa, 
but then I'll go into iRacing and be driving a car that has a DDU and I want to have my dash display in place because basically how I have my camera set up uh, in the game, I tend to lose a bit of the DDU just because I like that FOV and where it sits in relation to everything else. So like I said, it's, it's a very specific um, scenario where you're going to find this um, useful. So uh, let's just talk about some of the other attachments that come with this. So this is what you would get with the base unit. You would basically get the unit bracket, um, the attachment to your wheelbase, and then you get um, sort of one um, attachment here. But they sell basically um, like a number of different attachments in different sizes. So I'll show you what those look like. So what you have here, sorry, let me just make sure that's in focus. So this is one of the attachments. So these come in different lengths. Like this is probably the longest one. And then you can actually combine more than one to like get your exact uh, distance that you want. So this will allow the dash display to come out further from your wheelbase. And then they also have this really cool piece here, which you allows you to change the angle. So when it's your dash is sitting there, you can adjust just by untightening or, you know, loosening this screw. And then this will, these angles will move so that, you know, you can pretty much get your dash display the right length, the right angle, exactly where you, and this goes up and down, right? So if you wanted to, maybe you're sitting in like more of an F1 style position, you're further back, you could point the dash down towards you. Or if you're sitting higher up, you can point it upwards. So like really, um, it makes it so simple to find your preferred position. So let me show you as well to how this switches out. So I've got the grid DDU5 here now. So I just unscrew these, these screws here. And that just slips off. Sorry, I should probably unplug it first. And then, so I've got the, uh, the grid big boy here, the 10 inch. And then I just slip this on, tighten these up. And then you're good. You got your, your second dash display on, right? So yeah, not everyone obviously has two dash displays. Like I'm lucky to have this because grid sent it to me for review. So I do like, um, throwing this on obviously when I'm using like, um, a Porsche cup car, like the 992, uh, dash just to kind of get it as close as possible to the, um, the real car. Um, but I use the DDU five a lot just because it, it works with like a variety of different vehicles. So yeah, it's really that easy. And then you just take that off. So you can see on here, let me just refocus this. There we go. So even on here, these, um, these attachments here can move up and down within these channels here. So like there's limitless possibilities to get your, um, to get your dash display exactly where you where you want it um so yeah i mean that's pretty much it so let me just show you on the website here some of the different um attachments and and what's available so what's nice too about um let me just show you actually one more thing here so what i like about these adjustments here is so one of the things that i found annoying um before i think it was on the previous generation one was that you know, if you have this set to the right height, when you go to take it off and on, you kind of have to remember where it was sitting. But now what you can do is with these pieces, you can move these up and down once you get it in the desired position, lock these, uh, these basically these uh, cylinders behind there in place. And then you know that when this is sitting fully down, it's always back in the same position you had it. So I hope that makes sense the way I'm explaining it, but it basically kind of saves your position. So you don't have to remember uh, where it is. Um, you may just have to make adjustments when you, when you switch out a different DDU. So I think the use case, like let's, let's take out the fact of having two DDUs. Cause I, I would think that's not the majority of people, but if you're someone who wants to be able to use this when you want it and take it off when you don't like, this is the simplest, cleanest solution that I've found. Um, is that worth the price to you? I don't know. So let's take a look at, uh, the website here. So let's just pull up. Um, so this is Simcore's site. We're going to go to DDUs. So they have their own DDUs as well, which I've not tried before, but I've heard they're pretty good. Um, so this is the Lev1 universal system here, right? So this is what I was explaining, right? So um, this basically sits at the on the uh, on the wheelbase. Now, see, this is the previous generation where the attachments would go here, um, but now they have that new channel. 
so that you can lock this part into place and then your your position of your DDU is always kind of saved that way. So I think they haven't updated their photos on this potentially, but um, this is the unibracket here. So let's just take a look at the supported um, DDUs here. So they say it's compatible with all major DDU units, including the DS DS1S and DS5, which are their own, and the UD2. It also supports uh, Precision Sim Engineering's DDU, uh, and then the Grid DDU, and, and they say many others. So I would say if yours is not listed here, just send an email. Um, George, the owner, is super responsive, um, just to make sure that you know your dash will work with this unit uh, and I'm sure they'll get back to you pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, that's how it kind of looks here with the extensions I was talking about. So if like I use an extension on my wheelbase as well, though I don't need the DDU to necessarily come out this far. Um, but yeah, if you wanted it to do that and then you can do the angle adjustment um, here uh, as well. So that's on a semi cube. This is in combination with their uh, semi cube mounting system. So you know, when you choose your your mount option, you just have to make sure that you're selecting the right one based on your uh, on your wheelbase, um, and then and then you're pretty much good to go. So looking at the attachments, so let's sorry, let's go back to the price here because I just skipped over that. So ninety five dollars US. So I know it seems kind of steep for what it is, but when you look at how well this is made, and this is all like metal and carbon fiber, like none of this is 3D printed or plastic of any means. Like it's it's really super quality. Like it feels very polished um, and and something that works really well. So, at, you know, at a hundred bucks US, okay, is it worth it or not? I personally think it is, but you know, you'll have to make that decision for yourself. Um, and then when you start to add in, obviously some of these attachments, the price can go up considerably, right? So um, they come in sets. So the pivot set here, for example, so for two, two of those guys, it's 38 bucks um, US. So, you know, that brings it up uh, an, an, another little bit amount there. So and then you can get the extensions as well here, which are twenty two dollars. These are 50 millimeter extensions um, or you can kind of do a combination of, let's say, 10 millimeter extensions and uh, 20 millimeter extensions. So, you know, um, you might have to do some measuring, let's say, before you order to kind of determine, you know, which ones you need. I kind of just bought a few to have so that if I want to make adjustments and things like that on here, I can. And that's mainly because I, I review products and I'm making changes to my rig a lot. So I just wanted the expandability of it. But you could probably figure out how many of these you need. And if you don't need the pivot sets, then you don't need to worry about that. You know, if you just want the base unit just to be able to take it off and on and you don't care about, you know, the, the length of where it sits, then you really just need the base kit, right? For a hundred bucks. Uh, and then shipping, obviously taxes, duties, whatever will vary depending um, where you are in the world. Yeah, so that is pretty much the, the Lev1 system. I hope I've explained that as best I can. Uh, actually, sorry, one more thing I wanna touch on. So they recently added now, so the unit bracket fits um, those list of uh, dashes that I explained, but they recently came out with um, this Lev1 BR2. And the reason they did this, and I was actually very happy when they came out with this because this actually will fit um, a couple of other dashes. So including the Asher Racing one, so the four inch and the five inch, but it also fits now the, the Porsche DDU um, 10 inch dash display. So that's what's on the back of here. So hopefully you can see that. Let me just make sure that focus. Yeah. So this is the BR2 plate. So I bought this so that each of my dash displays has its own plate so that I don't need to take the plate off and on. I can just I can just swap this uh, back and forth. So um, yeah. So if you need that plate, you will have to purchase that because it does not come with the the basic kit uh, essentially. Right. So, so let me show you one more accessory actually from SimCore while we're here. Um, this is the uh, pivot system. So this is called the, I don't know, 20 adjustable pivot arm, they call it. Um, this is a super useful accessory. So I use this um, actually mainly right now I'm using this for, let me see if I can show you on here. So with my SimPush um, Lumarank replica. So I'm using one of these pivot arms here, which allows me to um, basically, you know, fully adjust where this goes. So it's a matter of unscrewing this and then it's got all these different points. Like you can just like dial this in exactly where you want it. And this back plate here is designed to um, attach right to your uh, aluminum profile, right? So 
um, that will just slot in it comes with all the hardware that you need and then you just put that in place and then now you can adjust uh, as you need let me just focus this a bit there we go so it's got a uh, quarter inch attachment which is kind of like your standard camera GoPro attachment which a lot of actually sim racing accessories have mounting holes on the back for this so just keep that in mind you would need to have that mounting hole um, funny enough actually on the sim push the hole was a slightly different size so I kind of had to drill it out a little bit to fit the quarter inch not not super elegant way to do it but it it did work quite well so what I can do now is I can I can untighten this and I can see I can move my um, my sim push around and, and get it exactly where you want and then you just tighten you're basically tightening this um, this thing here sorry tightening this part here and then it's 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 not gonna move like it's really even if you bump whatever your accessory is it's not gonna move so yeah really cool accessory um, this one goes for 30 bucks US which is pretty reasonable now you do need to purchase um, if you need the the mounting plate to the aluminum profile rig that's a separate purchase. So this is 30 bucks for the arm. And then to get the, uh, here's the, they call it a camera boom arm base. That's 22 bucks. So yeah, it's a little bit, I mean, I don't think it's pricey. I mean, I think that's kind of reasonable for, for what this accessory is. Um, you know, if you need more than, more than let's say one of these, like I, I actually got this second one because I'm going to use it to mount, um, a, a different display potentially, or, um, maybe do something different with my stream deck, but, um, yeah, they're just one of those things that's, that's kind of nice to have. Um, it's just, I found it's one of the nice, there, there are other, I've seen other products like this. There, there's another type of adjustment arm that you can get that's similar to this, to this one. But I, what I like about this is just how many, um, you know, minimal adjustments you can make on this to really dial it in. Um, and it works incredibly well. So yeah, this just gives you an idea of, you know, kind of the accessories from Simcore. Um, just to show you some other things that Simcore has on their site. So one of the things that they've, um, they're really good at is these wheelbase mounts. I don't have too much experience with these, but I know people that use these and they can really improve um, the mounting capabilities with your particular rig. Or if you have a rig that, you know, you don't have a support for, let's say like an Asa Tech uh, wheelbase, they sell mounts um, that work with Ace Tech wheelbases and and so just yeah different custom options but really um, well thought out well designed well you know quality made products you know like I said nothing is like plastic or 3D printed or anything like that not that, that that's poor in quality it's just what I'm saying is is that these are all metal like you know really industrial grade type accessories so you're you know you're paying for what you get for what you get here. Um, they also sell pedal plates now, um, actually for the active pedals, which not all of us are lucky to have, but, um, they actually, what's cool is, so this pedal plate, uh, these pedal plates here, they're, they were designed for the active pedals specifically, but they actually sell adapters for, um, you know, ultimate, the Hoisonville ultimate or the sprint pedals or VRS pedals, or even the Asa Tech pedals, which I have the Invictas so that you could fit um these pedal faces onto other pedal sets so if you don't like the pedal plates that came with your pedals or you maybe you want black ones for whatever reason um these are really nice looking pedal plates i'm actually considering getting these for my asa tech pedals um just because i think the brake is a bit wider uh and the throttle is a little bit longer and wider as well so i may pick those up but yeah so that's simcore they sell uh wheelbase extensions as well um, as well to, to extend where your wheel is. Um, I'm not using a Simcore one right now. I'm actually using a Sim Racing Bay one, but they, they all essentially do the same thing, but, uh, Simcore has, you know, different colors, different sizes. So yeah, I mean, I'm not, uh, I have no affiliation with Simcore or anything like that. Um, none of these products were sent to me for review. I bought all of these products, um, with my own cash. So these are my complete honest thoughts as a Sim racer and just, you know, things that I've found useful on my rig. Um, so if you have any questions, if I, if something wasn't clear in this overview, or you want to know something about how these work before you purchase either the, the Lev1, um, DDU mount or the, the pivot arm, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So yeah, thanks for stopping by until the next one, stay safe, happy racing.